Hi, this is David Henson with Henson First Attorneys in North Carolina. I was in court recently on behalf of a young child in what is called a minor settlement. And I realized that this is a process that parents often have questions about and thought it would be a great topic for one of my blogs. So, what is a minor settlement? A minor settlement is a court hearing before a judge to approve the settlement of a personal injury case for a minor child. Now that's quite a mouthful, so in plain English that means if a child under the age of 18 is injured in any type of case, whether it's from a car wreck or a personal injury or a medical malpractice case, then any money settlement that's reached between the responsible party and the child must be approved by a judge in court. So, for example, imagine we have a young child named John who's riding his bicycle and he's hit by a speeding car. John sustains a broken leg and has to have surgery to fix the leg. He has a painful recovery, but fortunately recovers with time. John, with the help of his parents or guardian, brings a claim against the driver and car insurance for his personal injuries, including his pain and suffering and scarring. In this example, let's assume that our lawyers are able to help John and his parents settle his claim with the insurance company for $15,000. This is where North Carolina law kicks in with regard to the minor settlement process. Because John is a minor, the law says that he can't legally enter into a binding legal contract, even though his parents have been involved in the process the entire time. Instead, the law provides that in order for a settlement in his case to be binding on everyone involved, that a court must approve the settlement. So how does the court process unfold? Well, with a hundred different counties in North Carolina, each county clerk handles the process a bit different. But in most cases, either a lawsuit or a special proceeding is filed with the clerk's office in the civil court where the child lives. In the majority of counties, the clerk will also require that an independent third party called a guardian ad litem be appointed to participate in the case as well. In most circumstances, that guardian ad litem is a local lawyer who has paid a nominal amount of money to review all of the facts of the case and to provide an opinion that the settlement is in the best interest of the minor child. The lawyers in the case then request a hearing before a judge in court. Prior to the hearing, all of the parties involved, the lawyers for both sides, the parents, and the guardian ad litem all draft and agree on the settlement documents that will be given to the judge in the hearing. The documents essentially set out all of the facts, the agreement that was reached, and what is to be done with any of the money that the child is to receive. At the court hearing, everyone involved will appear before the judge, which again includes the lawyers for both sides, the child, the parents, or guardian, and the guardian ad litem. The judge will then listen to both lawyers as they present the facts of the case and settlement, and will then have additional questions for the child, the parents, and the guardian ad litem. Assuming everything is in order and the judge agrees that the settlement is fair and in order, then the minor settlement will be approved. As a condition of the approval of the settlement, the judge, however, will control what happens to the child's money. The explanation of how and why this is is a bit complicated, but the end result is that in North Carolina, the judge is going to require that the money for the child be held at least until his, his or her 18th birthday. Now, many children, and sometimes their parents, are unhappy to learn that they'll be unable to have access to the money after the settlement, and instead must wait until the child turns 18. Unfortunately, except in very limited circumstances, will a judge vary from this procedure. Now, what happens to the money? Typically, one of two things. Option one is that it can be held by the clerk of court in an interest-bearing account and that, until the child turns 18. Then, on their 18th birthday, when they become a legal adult, they go down to the courthouse to get their check. The other alternative, if the amount the child is going to receive is large enough, judges will often allow the money to be invested in a structured settlement, or what's called a structured annuity. This is basically a guaranteed investment that pays the child the money back with interest at some point in the future or after their 18th birthday. The main point, though, is that the money is going to be held for safekeeping until the child comes of legal age. If you have additional questions, please feel free to go to my website at lawmed.com, or you can shoot me an email at dhenson at lawmed.com. 
This is David Henson with Henson First Attorneys. If you have questions, we have answers.